Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day two of the Time Matrix for Researchers webinar organized by the St. George on a Bike Project. Today, we will be talking about the technical implementation of the Time Matrix. I am Rose Gregorio, the Dissemination Officer of St. George on a Bike. Um, our speakers today are Joaquin More Lopez, Natural Language Processing Expert at BSC, and Artem Reshetnikov, Deep, Deep Learning Researcher at BSC. Uh, Maria Cristina Marinescu, coordinator of St. George on a Bike, and Antoine Isaac, R&D manager at Europeana, will be manning the chat, and they will answer some of the questions that you might have or reply to your comments. Um, I would like to remind you that this webinar is being recorded. Please turn off your cameras and mics and ask your questions through chat. Uh, the, the, it's answering your questions after each of their talks. Okay, I will now give the floor to Kim, uh, and he will be talking about filtering anachronic classes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rose. Can you hear the slides? I can you hear now? Can you can you see the slide? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, well, the the first talk uh, today will be about. Uh, filtering and electronic classes. It will be a quite short presentation, but uh, we will start with um, a reminder of uh, an issue I, I talked about yesterday, which was uh, shown in this figure. You see that these are the visual relations in the COCO data set. And uh, yesterday I, I said, or I pinpointed the fact that the most, among the most frequent uh, visual relations uh, between entities are uh, based on 20th century actions. And uh, notice that the most frequent one is the man riding a skateboard. So skateboards is uh, 20th century um, uh, entity, and it's one of the most frequent ones. So this is, this is consistent uh, with the, the goal of the COCO data set, which is to uh, collect images that uh, represent uh, today's everyday life. So <clears throat> when we use this uh, information, this uh, data set, because of the transfer learning that uh, Artem uh, explained yesterday, we want to transfer this knowledge uh, for describing uh, paintings. So we have to take this into account that there are many uh, entity relationships which are based on the 20th century and not uh, earlier centuries. So in a way we, fa we have to filter the anachronic classes in object identification and uh, in order to perform this, we have to uh, take information about, uh, about the entities involved uh, in, the, in the images and see if which ones are anachronic. And, and in our case, it's anachronic means that uh, entities that belong late 19th century uh, and, and 20th century. So in order to filter these entities, we use uh, different sources, Wikidata, Ngram, uh, Ngram uh, Google's Ngram, and Merriam-Webster. Well, <clears throat> the thing is that if we take uh, Ngram, uh, Google Ngram, or Merriam-Webster, uh, we have to take into account that the information about uh, when a specific entity or a specific word related to an entity appeared is from the language point of view. So, of course, uh, the Merriam-Webster says uh, when the, the word teddy bear or, um, or uh, cell phone appeared in the English language, of course, and uh, this has to be taken into account. So we have uh, used 
for instance, the Merriam-Webster uh, source of information because they provide the tools to automatically detect uh, when the, the word appear. And we assume, maybe wrongly, but uh, the assumption is that as we want to detect uh, entities according to the century, uh, maybe the Anglo-Saxon Anglo uh, society and, uh, and language evolution is not so different from Spanish or the French and so on. But well, this is, a, this is an assumption. Uh, we, we know that uh, fireworks were invented in China many centuries ago before they came in, into Europe. Yes, we know. Uh, we do know that. But uh, for a, a first approximation, we have taken the, the, the dictionary information. But uh, being aware that uh, it's, uh, it's based on a English language. So uh, when we analyze the, this metadata, we know, for instance, that the teddy bear there appears in 1905. So <clears throat> in the case uh, we have to describe the painting of St. George uh, killing the dragon, we take the, as, as you know, as it was explained yesterday, the pre-trained model, the Coco pre-trained model. And then according to the chronological information, we know that the uh, first description of the painting, which is a prince, uh, which, in which the princess is labeled as a teddy bear, there is a correction and uh, it says teddy bear cannot be because it's a, it's a painting from the 16th century. So there is a correction and then the most probable uh, entity for this is a person. So the teddy bear is labeled as a person. So uh, when we analyze and we have to take, um, we have to filter the words that uh, refer to entities uh, that could be anachronic, we have to take into account the senses of a word. Yeah, for, for instance, the, the, the word train, it has the sense of the means of, uh, means of transport. And of course, in this sense, uh, the uh, train as a means of transport cannot be, uh, it's, not, it's not depicted in a 15th century uh, painting, but train, meaning a caravan, can be. So we have to take uh, into account that uh, words may have, uh, or really have uh, different senses, and some of the senses are anachronic and some others are not. And we have to take uh, the sense which is not anachronic. In this case, the, the caravan. Meaning. And not even this, we have also to take into account the, uh, the design of the, of the image that is depicted. So one thing is to, um, to describe a train like this, which is uh, quite the, the, the early uh, versions of trains. And the other is uh, a train like this, which is more modern. And, and the Coco data set, the, the trains depicted in Coco data sets have uh, this design. So we have to take into account that, uh, that we know that when in train, is in the Coco data set, that means with this design, not this one. So uh, this is a, an important thing. And well, uh, this is uh, all for about this, about this issue. If you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Oh, here. Uh, okay, there's one, one I think. Well, 
Yes. Uh, do you only check the actual concept label for anachronicity, or do you also also take related terms since it's from Boromit into account that could still overlap with class individual classifier? Uh, yes, we take we take as a basis the 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 Coco data set word for the entity label. And uh, we have seen, for instance, in the, in, in the case of train, that train can be interpreted uh, in different senses. And these senses, and these senses are uh, differentiated in the WordNet, in, in WordNet. So train as a means of transport has a label and train as a caravan has this label. So in that case, um, we have taken uh, we have taken into account the the, the differences in an across the city among the the census of world. So the the issue that you are, you are raising it's is also interesting to to, to see. To okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right. If not, we'll move on to the next one, also by Kim. He will be talking about defining new visual classes and visual relations. Okay. Well, so the next talk is about uh, defining new visual classes and visual relations for cultural and iconographic uh, symbols. Uh, the contents uh, of this talk is the uh, first one. First one is uh, the topic of class refinement with an example of refinement of uh, the person class, which is a uh, Coco dataset class. We will see how this class can be refined. Then we will explain uh, from this general class, which is a person, the person class, how can we predict uh, refined classes? And that means new classes. And then we will talk about uh, visual relationships of the present and the past and see uh, the differences between uh, visual relations portrayed in photographs and visual relations for, uh, depicted in in paintings. So well, let's start with um, class refinement. <clears throat> uh, well, and the photograph on, on the left is a, is a Flickr uh, photograph, and the caption is generated by a system trained with a Coco data set, with Coco data set. And notice that um, the caption is a person on a horse. That's that's okay. So it could be because we are not interested in knowing who this particular person is. But imagine that instead of this uh, photograph, we have the painting of Saint George uh, killing the dragon. And imagine that the caption generated is a person on a horse. So, well, if the goal of the project is to provide uh, or to in, improve or to disseminate cultural heritage and cultural information and European citizens be aware of all this uh, cultural and symbolic uh, background of our lives, uh, saying about the picture of St. George, that it's a person on a horse, it's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not enough, of course. So the idea is how can we uh, refine the person class, which is quite generic in the Coco data set, how to refine this class into most, more specific classes, and these classes uh, um, providing uh, cultural and symbolic and iconographic information. So, uh, we 
we found out that the Wikimedia taxonomy of paintings provides as a, a very good ground uh, in, the, in the work of refining uh, the person class. So, on the one side we see in, in categories, the Wikimedia uh, Commons categories on paintings, we see paintings of a hyponym. For instance, we have paintings of acrobats, paintings of architects, paintings of beggars, paintings of blacksmiths, paintings of cardinals. That means that in this category, there are paintings. Uh, the uh, subject is an instance or a refined class of person. And on the other hand, we also see Wikimedia categories where the, the refined class of person is defined as a visual relation. For instance, painting of men with birds. So the category, the refined category for person is defined with a visual relation between a man and birds. And, not, and notice that even we can uh, refine much more the, the person thanks, uh, thanks to the category painting of men with birds we can also detect the character Prometheus so because Prometheus is an instance of a man uh, with a bird in, in that case the bird is an eagle and, and so on so uh, we thought that this could be a very good ground uh, to to uh, tackle uh, this idea. So, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. So the thing is, refining uh, uh, the class person means, in a way, to detect uh, new classes. And uh, there are two main uh, methods to annotate, uh, uh, or to detect, sorry. There are two methods, more or less, to detect uh, new classes. No, one of them is collecting uh, images uh, for training the, the system, and these images depict, or represent, the new class we want the system to learn. And uh, this should be done manually. And uh, that implies that this task of uh, annotating manually the, three, the new training images for the new class, that means that is uh, tedious when, the, when we have large databases. Uh, then there are, mm, there are a few examples where the classes are distinctly differentiated. So we have uh, the issue of overlapping, that uh, this issue was raised uh, yesterday. Then we have the problem that the same entity or the same class uh, is depicted with um, variations, imposed variations. And then as far as we know, the, the, the work in, uh, of introducing new classes uh, because of the tediousness and all these things uh, that the, the, the list of classes uh, provided are quite short. Uh, then we will see the prediction from basic classes and we will explain more or less the idea of, of predicting new classes from the novel option captioner which is which provides the seed idea of our uh, prediction, which is uh, uh, based on a closed test. And I will explain later what is this is about. So here you can see examples of how the same entity uh, is uh, depicted in, in various poses. Sometimes it looks uh, to the left and sometimes the right. Um, and, uh, and of course, um, 
in order to um, to detect that the character is not a person but uh, Saint Sebastian, uh, if we want, if we prefer to uh, uh, label manually all the possible variations of this class, it can be quite uh, there is something quite difficult, and. The other problem is that, uh, as uh, Artem uh, told you yesterday, there are not um, many, many, many images uh, of Saint, uh, Saint Sebastian looking on the right, Saint Sebastian looking on the left. So it's quite difficult for the system to be trained because there, there, there's not enough uh, data of the different uh, poses of, of uh, Saint. Saint Sebastian or maybe any other uh, person. Uh, well, this is a uh, this is taken from the, the an article about the icon art that that I based, and it's an it's an example that uh, they uh, have worked on the on the issue we are talking about that uh, they uh, present. Uh, instances of person, so like a child, Jesus, crucifixion, Mary, nudity, and Saint Sebastian. Uh, but the, the the list is quite short, and in a way, uh, they they uh, introduce these uh, these entities. But um, well, the idea is more or less is well. Let's try this. Let's try that. And I, uh, let's try uh, Mary, let's try Angel, or let's try Crucifixion. But uh, our um, suggestion is uh, to uh, tackle the, the, um, the person uh, identification based on a taxonomy, which is the, the thing I did. Uh, that I so, <clears throat> As for the, the prediction of classes based on other classes, uh, one's proposal was the novel option captioner. The novel option captioner is a system that uh, when the image depicts an entity which is not in the, cla uh, the class, list uh, they put uh, so the, 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 the caption is generated but the class which is not in the list is uh, is guessed and in a way that the, the this guessing is put in a linguistic context so for instance here you have a giraffe standing in a field with a and then this PL, it's a placeholder, that means, well, this other thing, this other entity, which is not in my list, will be predicted according to external information. So they use uh, an, object de an object detector model, an object detection model, based on COCO data set uh, yeah, uh, captions. And then, according to this model, which is, has been trained with uh, the Cochrane data set images, uh, the system guesses that this entity, which was not identified in the class list, then is guessed as a zebra. So, <clears throat> in our case, our suggestion, uh, our suggestion is. Uh, taking this idea of uh, putting a placeholder in a linguistic context in order to guess or to predict uh, the class, the new class. But uh, our method is based on the idea of a closed test. The closed test is the is the activity, is the task that uh, many people who learn a second language uh, uh, are familiar with, 
which is the fill in the blanks. So imagine that we have this context and it says, a person wearing a crown is a, and then uh, king or queen is expected to be the word that fills in this blank. Or a person riding a horse is a, maybe riders, some others will say other things. But the idea is that we put uh, a linguistic sequence and then, or um, common knowledge is uh, triggered in order to see the, to see the, the, the entity uh, involved here. So the fact is, how can we implement this closed test, test computationally? And the way of uh, implementing this is by using a transformer based language model like uh, BERT that attempts to predict the original value of a mask word based on the context by the, on the context provided by the other non mask words in the sequence. So this is a typical task of uh, transformer models that one way of evaluating a language model is to mask words and the language model is able to predict the mass word. And if the predictions are validated by, by humans, that means that the language model is, uh, is fit. Is okay. So these are examples of the, how uh, we have uh, uh, modeled or have, have been the, uh, carry out this task in computational, in computational way. First, we are loading the, the standard uh, BERT, Google's BERT uh, language model. This is the standard which is provided by Google and it's the one is uh, is the standard of the model. And this model is ready for this task, the filling the blank uh, task. So then we put uh, the, 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 the sequence, a person riding a horse is a, and then we run the, the procedure. And then according to the model, there are some predicted choices. Notice that among the predicted choices, we have horse, person, rider, uh, human, and all these things. Uh, but we have to take uh, two things into account. First of all, that we select as a, as a good uh, prediction, uh, a word which is a hyponym of person, because we want to uh, identify refined classes of person. So horse will not be will not be chosen. Person is person, so but rider, which is a hyponym of uh, person, is one of the uh, one of the predicted values we uh, we take. Because notice that there we have this tensor where we can see the the prediction probability of each of these predicted uh, word. And we have uh, seen that more or less the ones that are more reliable are those that are over uh, this uh, score, this probability score. So in that case, we choose a rider. So uh, we can guess that the person riding a horse is a rider. And the same for in this the context, a person wearing a crown is a, and notice here that the predicted entities are crown, monarch, king, and uh, sovereign, and, and queen. As far as queen, so they are the, the predicted class is quite, quite good. So, <clears throat> The idea is 
that we would like to guess the new class, which is a, a refined instance of person, by guessing this uh, class in a reference sequence. The reference sequence is has this format: a virtual relation sequence followed by a is a. That means that a visual relation sequence defines the class. So that means that the, the visual relationship between a person and a crown defines the class king or queen or, whatever. or the visual relations uh, sequence of person riding a horse uh, defines the, the class So the class prediction uh, has these steps. Imagine that we have bound the bounding boxes of classes detected in the picture. Imagine that the bounding bo boxes are person and a crown. Then we predict the visual, uh, the, the relation word between these classes. So we predict the relation word between these classes. For instance, a person wearing a crown. And we, when we have guessed or we have predicted the, the relation word, then we have the visual relation sequence. And then the visual relation sequence is put in the context or in the sequence or the reference sequence. And then according to this, we define or we guess, we predict the uh, uh, the new class. So, person with account is a king. So, um, this image of a king here that has been labeled as a person according to the Coco data set classes can be relabeled or can be identified as a as a king. So, this is this is the this is the idea. So, as I, as I have said before, we have to guess or we have to predict the visual relation between the entity of one bounding box and the entity of the, the other bounding box. So, we have to predict the, the mask relation word in the, uh, in the visual relation sequence. So, these are... Uh, um, examples of how this can be done traditionally. We load, we load the, the same language model, the BERT uh, language model here, and then we put the, the, the visual, uh, the visual relation comes, uh, sequence, a person, and then it guesses the uh, the relation word, and uh, as we see in this example, we see a person on riding with, and then we take the ones that have uh, uh, the value, the, the prediction score over ten. So in that case, we will have a person on a horse riding a horse or with a horse. And the same for uh, the um, for predicting the the relation word between a person and a crown. And uh, here we have that uh, the most uh, predicted words are with, wearing, and without them. So with and wearing. Person with a crown or a person wearing. So, um, what the f the next thing was well, uh, instead of guessing visual relations, that in the previous stages of the project we said, what about this? What about that? Or what about writing? What about Drinking. What about um, killing? 
together, uh, we decided to uh, ground the visual relation uh, sequences on the on a, a taxonomy of on a painting taxonomy. So we wanted to uh, take a look at uh, how uh, a, a taxonomy of paintings in the Wikimedia Commons can uh, can help us. Because as, as I said before, uh, instances or refined uh, classes of person are defined by using a visual relationship. It's a, a, a relation word. Like uh, men with birds or uh, these, these words. In that case, uh, we have seen that some of the of person classes refined by using a uh, visual relation and by using the uh, relation word, some of them are visual relations with uh, entities uh, in the Cocoa data set classes. For instance, painting of men with birds or painting of men with horses. Uh, although the class in Cocoa data set is person, we uh, can uh, consider men as an instance of person, so it could be considered as an instance of a corporate asset class. And birds and, and horses are also in the list of corporate asset classes. But there are other um, visual relations between men or, or person and classes which are not uh, in the list of Cocoa data set classes, like a uh, sword. And notice that uh, a painting of, of St. Catherine, uh, the St. Catherine can be detected by using this uh, visual relationship. Uh, a woman with a sword. And in that case of Prometheus can be detected by uh, this uh, visual relation. A man with a bird. And that is um, so uh, we we chose and this the, uh, we chose some of these classes the some of the classes which are not in the cocoa data set classes like sword and others that we will um, we will explain later and then when we uh, explain the, the current state of the art of the project we will show some of them. And then having uh, added um, entities that are not in the Cocoa data set uh, and are in paintings, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, implemented the prediction of new classes. One thing I, I would like to, to comment is saying, well, if you Maybe you guess if you add uh, new classes which are not in the in the Cocoa data set, and you add swords and all these things, why not put the whole thing, the Saint George and whatever? And, uh, and and the thing is that we have added classes where the problem of posing and also there are no. Mm, mm, much variation in the in the in the entity. So a sword uh, has a shape which is quite distinct, distinguishable, which is which is not the same case uh, as for uh, Saint Sebastian, that uh, depend uh, as, as, or uh, or any other uh, instance of person that you have to take into account many poses and many uh, variations and overlappings and these things. So we have chosen uh, entities which are uh, whose shape is quite well defined. So well, I now uh, explain how we uh, predict uh, instances of person, refine instances of person, and uh, we will explain how this uh, how this is performed uh, iteratively. So. <clears throat> Imagine that uh, we have a, we have an image, and uh, in this image 
we have uh, four banding boxes for for four uh, different entity or classes. We have the the banding box for a person, then horse, sword, and dragon. The horse, sword, and dragon are quite uh, specific. And the thing is, how can we uh, uh, guess or predict that the person portrait is a more refined class, not just a person? So in that case, we put first the, the visual relation between a person and a horse. And then we, as we saw before, the possibilities are a person on a horse or a person riding a horse. And with this, this visual relation uh, sequence is put in the reference sequence. And then we guess that the, a person on a horse is a rider. In that case. And if we put the context, a person riding a horse is also a rider. So we can predict that this person who is in a relation with, with a horse, with, with a horse, can be guessed as a rider. So <clears throat> We do the same, we perform the same, but with uh, the relation between a person and a sword. And then we see that the relation word that links, again, relates uh, the person with sword are with carrying and holding. And when we generate the, the visual relation sequence, and it's, in, it's put in the reference uh, sequence, a person with a sword is a, and then we have warrior, soldier, which is uh, the hyponyms of person with, uh, with a score of over 10. And in the and for the, the second uh, relation, uh, visual relation sequence, well, it is the same. So there are two other classes predicted, which are rider, warrior, and soldier. As for dragon, we see that uh, the, the score values are below 10, so we cannot infer, we cannot, I guess, uh, another class. Then, from person, we have predicted that maybe this person is a rider or a warrior or a soldier. Then, person is relabeled as a rider, the first, uh, the first guest class. And then we perform the same, the, the same procedure between rider, horse, sword, and dragon. And we perform the same thing. And we notice that when rider is put in a, we want to know the relation word between rider and sword, we see that uh, there are the relation word with holding, carrying, and then we generate the visual relation sequence and put in a reference sequence, a rider carrying a sword, is a knight. It's one of the predicted. So we add this class, rider, warrior, soldier, and knight. And, and so on. And for uh, dragon, uh, sorry, for dragon, we see and uh, and uh, we have a combination, which is, which this uh, visual words are not, uh, in the, are not in the ones we we take into account, and the and the uh, score is uh, below ten. So the classes predicted are rider, warrior, soldier, and knight. So new classes can be predicted with complex relation sequences. For instance. If we put 
a warrior with a sword and a dragon is, and notice that in this uh, uh, in reference sequence, we see that one of the classes predicted is hero. So, in that case, uh, we give the opportunity for citizens to know that not only uh, St. George was the person uh, that killed the dragon, but it, it would also be a hero like Siegfried or Frodo or Beowulf. So uh, this is quite uh, an interesting thing we can, uh, we can find out. And, uh, and another example of a complex uh, reference sequence is a knight riding a horse with a sword and a dragon is a, and notice that in the predicted uh, classes, is saint, but saint is not over the, the, the 10 score. But if we take a, a Wikipedia table of uh, saints attributes, and uh, we list the attributes of St. George, we see that the soldier is matched, well, the dragon is matched, the soldier is matched, the knight is matched, and of course the, the saint, of course, is matched because it's in, the, in, the, in this table. So we are, uh, we are um, thinking of how to uh, complement this guessing with uh, encyclopedic information like uh, Wikipedia, where uh, there are tables in which the attributes of uh, instances of person can, can be seen. So well, this is uh, as for the, the guessing classes. And uh, as you see, we have the, um, you think we count the people uh, with swords, uh, holding uh, swords and other things. So we have to take into account that the visual relations in paintings uh, are maybe quite different from the visual relations we uh, can see in uh, databases where systems, the, where um, object detection systems are based on. For instance, uh, there are, in paintings there are many visual, violent visual relations. For instance, we have the many paintings about the slaughter of the innocents. And we see people killing uh, children, which is an image which is not expected to be found in any in any Coco data set or any other uh, data, photograph database. And so, of course, uh, current uh, object detectors are not prepared to, to describe this kind of, of things happening in the picture. And, and uh, another thing uh, we have uh, to be aware of is that uh, in, in current uh, data set uh, images, there is a, a sort of gender bias, uh, visual relations. These are the visual relations in, in COCO, the COCO data set. And we see that, uh, as you see, there are uh, many men, well, not, not so many, but there are quite uh, a number of uh, photographs of men riding horses on horse. And if we see how many photographs of women riding horses, we see that the number of women riding horses are, uh, are fewer. And um, this is quite, um, interesting to see that uh, there is a bus in some cases or well, for instance uh, uh, motorbikes there are more more men riding motorbikes than women 
And I think it is an interesting point because in paintings, uh, we see uh, women uh, with a visual relation uh, uh, with an object that in um, the present day is related for, uh, to men. For instance, we have the Lady Godiva representations of a, of a woman riding a horse or the, 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 the Valkyrie, the, the women who, who are riding horses. And, the, and, um, and also there are the um, paintings of, um, of Judith uh, feeling, behaving uh, all of fairness or, or St. Catherine that uh, holds a sword that these uh, these items, which are in our no um, knowledge, it's, it, it, they seem to be associated with men. In in paintings, they, they are also in uh, related to women. But in current uh, image databases, there seems to be a sort of a gender bias in these areas. And uh, I think that's all. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have uh, questions. Okay, there were quite a lot of comments and questions, but do you have, <laughs> anybody have anything, uh, any questions specifically for Kim? So, do you take the painting's title into account? If there is a date of the painting in the metadata, there will be a title too. Yes, yes, we, we, uh, we, uh, it's, uh, we think or we know that uh, we have to take into account the title. So it's, uh, it's the idea of uh, knowing that with St. George, uh, we can match the entities depicted in the, in the, in the, in the painting. Uh, as uh, in the Wikipedia uh, So title, of course, and, uh, and the date are also. Well, how to make sure that the class guessed by the language model is correct, that the caption generated corresponds to what is depicted in the image? Yes, this is a, a very good question, and this is the question. Um, the, and the, the fact is that uh, in the, um, in the um, project, we are trying to detect uh, entities and relations between entities that belong to our uh, um, cultural uh, heritage and our symbolic framework. And our, our, our um, suggestion or assumption is that the language model uh, or, or the iconographical knowledge and cultural knowledge is based on uh, the, uh, uh, the language model. It's organized. So the things we can predict from um, uh, 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 an entity belonging to the symbol or symbolic system is not, uh, is not uh, or is consistent to our uh, knowledge, of course. But the, the question is, what about if instead of a person riding a horse, we have a person killing a horse? Yes, this is a, this is a good uh, question. And this is a thing we have, we are planned to tackle with. And it also depends on the, on the, on the context. So now we are trying to describe uh, paintings based on cultural heritage and symbolic uh, meaning. But if we try to transfer this knowledge, for instance, to uh, films and movies, uh, this point is important to, to have into account because as you know, uh, in, for instance, in the Godfather uh, movie, there is the scene of a, of a, well, the, the, uh, a horse beheaded, which is not quite frequent in the cultural heritage uh, 
representations. So it's a very good point and, uh, and it's, a, it's a crucial thing to make sure that uh, the, the guessing and the predictions are good depending on the field uh, of application. Uh, yes, there's usually a title that, ah, sorry, Maria Cristina. Ah, yes, Mar Maria Cristina says a uh, uh, thing which is uh, quite true. Because, um, for instance, uh, the title, uh, the title is uh, Love. And the, and the uh, picture's portrait or the picture is a, uh, a man and a woman. So sometimes uh, the title is not informative enough. Uh, okay, thanks for the talk. Isn't the entire system then dependent on the captions generated by BERT, which is trained on multiple domain data that can generate confusing captions for many images which can be drawn in the first place? Uh, how can we deal, tackle, add that out before refining them? Uh, a very good point. And this is a, and this is a thing we have uh, talked about. And this is a first. This is a first try. We have used uh, the 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 standard bear model because, as uh, as as you say, the it's trained on multiple domain data. Uh, we thought that this could be good. That the the cultural, symbolic, uh, iconographic uh, relations will be more uh, will, will appear, uh, and taking into account the the variations of domains, if these things are also outstanding, that means that we are on the right track. But um, it's just a uh, first try and even we are considering, we are wondering in preparing a language model for paintings or for cultural heritage, in which maybe the, the saint, uh, as you remember the example of the saint, which is which has a, a low score, then uh, it would have a, a higher score. And uh, we would like, people involved in cultural heritage things to help us to provide data uh, that uh, can be excellent for uh, preparing a, a language model for art or cultural heritage. Uh, you can make sure, unless you check it, that that doesn't stop you to be something that you're waiting. Uh, Maria Cristina, <laughs> good, good answer. Bird will generate something that may be possible from a language point of view, but, but it might have nothing to do with the company. Yes, uh, it's it's what I what I said, but um, the, because with uh, in in this stage, on this stage of the project, we take images with a, a rich symbolic meaning and rich symbolic uh, dimension. So for instance, St. George killing or Prometheus uh, and, and uh, the, the, the depictions of Prometheus, which the, there are close relationships between, between the entities. So we are uh, now, now we are working on uh, images that are uh, quite uh, consistent in uh, symbolic and, and symbolic uh, point of view. Uh, one thing, uh, okay, thank you. I mean the captions being concrete rather than images, sorry, it's like those confusion. Mm -hmm. The fine thing, mm. uh, uh, but, mm, one we have compared we have compared the entity identifications with the language model with entity identifications as the ones uh, I, uh, I showed you yesterday and 
the differences are quite uh, evident because uh, if you remember yesterday, the, the, it, it said that the motorbike was standing in the dirt. So the captions provide uh, inconsistent semantic relationships. And thanks to the language model, we can, uh, in a way, uh, make sure that the thing predicted will not be as semantically inconsistent as in other uh, uh, state-of-the-art systems. The title may be very informative regarding the contents. For instance, same, so they have the same in the title. So there's a high probability of typical people sense according to the piece of the. Uh, so I, I read the whole, the title might be very informative regarding the context. For instance, 15th century paintings of saints usually have the saint in their title. So there is a higher probability of typical attitude of saints occurring than in pictures when there is no saint in the title. Yes. Okay. A lack of locations is a problem. Yes, nothing will touch on this. And if it's a we can also have a uh, thousand good captions of our. Let's say that, yeah. Uh, looking forward to it. I will do this to look at it from the other side of the pipe. Taxonomy and education. Thank you. <laughs> On titles, sometimes also the titles, especially in aggregators, may not be descriptive of the content. Yes, this is the thing I said. Uh, Kim, you showed that determining the visual relation of man and the horse leads to the happening rider. They would then further infer the new class from rider and we saw as night. Question, can we hope that when trying to do so with a time matrix, we'll cut to, to the chase and get to the person's happening night faster without going through the step rider based on the fact that the person on a horse in the 15th century was likely to be a man and at the time a man on a horse was not a night? Or is it too far fetched to think so at this point? Well, uh, we are becoming the idea of getting more good captions for training. Yes, it, it's, it's, there are possibilities. We have to see uh we have to see in what way just the the language model all the language model only or um, using other sources like that can uh, refine the or we can improve the the, 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 the discussion. uh i don't admit the content but the impact of measuring probabilities i rather depict the person in an icon will probably not be a sportsman yes uh Yes, uh, this is true. Uh, maybe the play, uh, another, another interesting metadata would be the, if it's on canvas or on, or it's an icon, it's another metadata to, to take into account in the time matrix. I know there is no relevant content, it could be relevant context. Okay, any, any other question? So, uh, well, I insist, I insist on this idea. So, sorry, Rose, I insist on this idea that the pictures are, uh, we are dealing with are pictures with a high symbolic meaning. And we assume that the language model captures these uh, relationships. When we transfer this, for instance, to movies, then we have to make sure the issue that you say that maybe there's no, there's a mismatch within the language model. But the, the, the goal of the project, the St. George project, is how to, how to make artificial intelligence be aware of these uh, symbolic relationships. And I, I think that, that's why we have chosen the language model option. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kim. And thank you, everyone, for all your questions. Um, it's, it's very good questions and comments. OK, um, the next talk will be by Artem. And he will be talking about refining the identification of classics in visual relations. Um, hey to all, first of all. Um, I'm really glad to see you again. Um, and right now, we are going to um, more deep understanding of uh, time matrix and refine the classes according to time context. Um, just give me a second to share my screen. 
Okay, cool. Um, in my presentation, I would like to mention um, two main points. Um, the refining the classes uh, according to knowledge databases or such kind of structures and, about, uh, and uh, according to time contexts. First of all, uh, I will just uh, make the quick review how we see the idea of refining the classes according to the, the, the knowledge graphs and knowledge bases. And after that, we will uh, go to the, um, to the <coughs> refining classes of time matrix uh, according to time, and it would be the main idea of time matrix. Um, so, first of all, uh, we have to understand what is uh, knowledge graph or knowledge base. So it's a technology used to store the complete structure and unstructured information. Um, and there are a lot of different types of uh, knowledge graphs, which we checked before the start of the project and during the project. Uh, it was like knowledge, uh, Google knowledge graph, it was DBpedia, it was Wikidata, it was ConceptNet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all of them has, uh, have, have different advantages and disadvantages and it's really important for us because we have to understand what kind of um, information we would like to extract. Um, the main idea, the main idea of um, defining the, the refining of classes based on this uh, scheme. For example, like we have the the object detector object detection model which already detected three main objects it's a book it's a person and it's uh together um according to knowledge graph we can uh, find the relationships between these two between these objects and try to understand what these objects means and how they can be related to each other so if we will see the the definition of together in Wiki, wikimedia we can see that uh, it's a small um skull cap worn by clerks or popes or various Catholic churches. Uh, at the same time, we understand that clerks or popes or cardinals is a person. So based on this information, we can understand that the person, which detected already by the object detection model, is, is a clerk or is a, uh, is a pope. And the final output class will be a pope or a cardinal with a book without to have so this is the main idea how we how we understand this but the the the, the key point and the problem point right now is a knowledge graph because um as i said before the knowledge graph is a, is a system of structured uh, knowledges but um it's really difficult to work with this structure, and we are trying to find this, 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 this kind of solution. But at the same time, we can uh, define the classes according to the time context. The point that how to find, how to extract this metadata about the time context of the objects. Uh, I would like to mention right now, one key point the approach which we choose is is not the the best one but uh on our level our like position of the project we haven't find uh found any another approach so that's why we decided to choose the approach which we have right now during the project we chose, uh, we, 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 we checked uh, three main um, sources of time contacts of the classes. First of all is uh, Google Ngram Viewer, uh, and Kim already mentioned it. A second one is Wikidata, and the third one is Dictionary Approach. Um, why we decided to use Dictionary Approach? We, like all of us, understand that it's not the best one because uh, the dictionary approach based on the language information and sometimes it can uh, it can be cannot be correct on, and sometimes it cannot be full or it can be related to the specific culture especially if, if we are talking about the english language so we have to find a, another approach or comparison the languages or comparison the language models 
it's for the future. Uh, but why we decided not to use the Google Ngram and Wikidata? Because Wikidata looks like really interesting source of information, especially time context information, and it's pretty cool. Google Ngram is also focused on, um, on corpus of the text. So it means that um, Google Ngrams has um, same disadvantages as a dictionary approach. A part of it, uh, we cannot um, check the position of the, the meaning of the word according to the position in the time context. Here you can see the example of, um, uh, of probabilities of appearing uh, the word car in a corpus. And as you can see, the probability of appearing of the car, appearing the word the car in, in a corpus is pretty high in 16th century. But Google and Gram doesn't allow to check what was the meaning of the car in this uh, in this time period. So that's why we decided to reject this uh, this approach. The problem with uh, Wikidata that uh, when we try to check all of eighty classes of what data set in according to Wikidata and to find the, the 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 date of inception of each class, we could find just the classes of uh, 18th and 20th century. So yes, we could define the class of TV, uh, remote, cell phone, laptop, uh, etc., etc., etc. But we couldn't uh, define the class, for example, skizzers. Uh, it's really interesting story because the skizzers. Um, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I don't remember exactly the date, but as far as I remember, the skizzers in our form, in form which we know it. Uh, appeared in Europe just in uh, 16th century. So it means that the schizers before 16th century in the paintings is not schizers. And these, uh, these um, issues, these specific classes, we couldn't check in, uh, in Wikidata because, because of the lack of data. That's why we decided to choose the dictionary approach. And uh, as, as you can see, we choose the, uh, the Merriam-Webster dictionary for it. What is the time matrix exactly? So there is a kind of confusion in our team because we call the approach time matrix, but we have the time matrix exactly. Um, it's the simplest, simplest um, implementation of time matrix. So we extract the information from uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary and put it into the, the kind of matrix where we have the, the class, person, bicycle, motorcycle, airplane, et cetera, et cetera, and century when this class appeared. Um, yes, I know that uh, the, it's pretty strange that person appeared in seventh century because person appeared before, of course, but we have to take into account that we based on the language model. So we have to, to understand the history of like old, lang old, old English, uh, Middle English, and New English. So that's why. Uh, this is the simplest uh, representation of time matrix. So the idea is to use this representation. We can save it in like CSV file. We can save it in in, in the matrix in in the code or any kind of like uh, form, and we can use it uh, in 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 in, in compare. Um, this is the simplest example of how we can do it. So uh, we decided not to, um, for now, for now, we, we decided not to include, we decided not to integrate the time, the idea of time matrix into the neural network directly. So definitely we can understand that it's possible to do and we will work on it in the future. But right now we decided to use the time matrix as a, a post algorithm. So the, uh, we used the pre-trained COCO uh, data set model which detect 80 classes and apply this uh, model to, to the painting. The model detected several objects. As you can see, it's person, bicycle, dining table, cell phone, and book. Um, take into account the date of the, of the painting, like 17th century. Uh, we can check the, the time of inception of each class. It's a person, bicycle, book, cell phone, dining table. According to Wikidata, according to 
Google Ngram, according to Merriam-Webster, doesn't matter. So it, it, this, this, this logo is just just example of some kind of knowledge, knowledge source. And by comparing this, um, the, the date of, in, uh, of creation of, uh, of painting with the date of inception of class, we can delete some classes, as you can see, and we will receive the final result. Final result will be like just a person and a book. Because we are understand we, we understand that uh, the the bicycle cell phone and dinner table. Okay, I understand the dinner table can be like uh, discussable, but anyway. We, we understand that cell phone and bicycle cannot appear in, in, in a painting of uh, 17th century. It's a simplest implementation of the refining the classes. But what if the model detected some useful information in these um, wrong objects? And um, we can extract this information and understand what the model wanted to say. Um, the idea, <clears throat> the idea of uh, this implementation was based on the structure of the model and uh, the neural net, net, the neural networks exactly. Um, the people who works with neural networks can say that it's true that uh, the last layer of the neural network is. Um, is uh, produce the sequences of probabilities for each object. So for example, like uh, if you have the object cell phone, you will see that the probability of the, the class cell phone is 0 0.8. Then we have another probability, another class with another probability, another class, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you have like 80 classes, for each object, the neural network will generate the 80 probabilities. And our assumption, our uh, assumption was um, if we will extract all these probabilities and we will check the, the probabilities according to the time constants. Um, so, um, if the model detected the cell phone, we will extract the probabilities of uh, this object, the whole probabilities, and we will, we will check which object, which the next, which the next class, will fit the time contacts, and we will show this class, not the class which detected by the neural network. It was just assumption. And we made a lot of different experiments and we understood that um, based on the shape model uh, can detect the, 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 uh, the acronism uh, in, in paintings. But at the same time, we can, using this, this approach, we can, we can refine the class. And it works in, in, in a lot of cases. So here you can see that, for example, the next one after the cell phone, According to, to the, 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 the highness of, of the probability was a book. And taking into account that the cell phone uh, is not fit for the time context, we decided to choose the book instead of cell phone. And this is main algorithm, this is simplest algorithm of uh, time matrix which we implemented. Of course, uh, we could, uh, for example, um, implemented in the, into the last layer of the neural network, we can do it, we could do it in, in parallel model of the neural network, which will work with object detection, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just uh, the first and simplest representation of the idea of time matrix. Um, I guess, I guess I will answer some Questions right now because the next presentation is uh, uh, is mine as well. 
uh, I will answer the next question. Uh, I will answer for the questions, and I will uh, continue. Um, How do you map classes to Wikidata? Wikidata is using key and P entity code, right? By uh, comparing label. Yes, um, actually, to be honest, we don't use the Wikidata right now because um, we just checked. Uh, we just we checked manually, so we we decided to choose the 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 AT, uh, 80 classes of uh, Coco data set and we, 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 we checked the manual, we checked it manually. So one by one. And after that, when we found that, there, that, that a lot of classes don't have any information about the, the inception, we decided to, um, to find another approach. And that's why we focused on the, on the, on the dictionary approach. Um, Uh, in the San Catherine instance segmentation example, you exchange the class label, but the segmentation remained the same. Give him another top ranking class. It may be possible to improve the segmentation. Have you tried something in that direction? Um, not yet. Why? Because the segmentation, um, the, the, the idea of segmentation is really interesting for us. And I, told, uh, I, I talked about it yesterday. We would like to work with segmentation, but right now we don't do it because it takes a lot of time in case of preparing the data sets. Um, as I told, uh, I told before, I talked before yesterday that the project has two different directions. One of them is object detection and one of them is time matrix. I mean, a part of like another directions and right now we are working just with time matrix like here I, I, I make the presentation just about the time matrix and we are working just 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 with uh, class names and the time contents but in the object detection we work in different way and the next step we, which, which, which we would like to, to implement is a, is true segmentation based on the uh, on the paintings but at the same time it's uh, really time time consuming uh, task because even right now we have the like 4k data set already and we were focused on it like for months and months of preparation of this data set so that's why it's it's really time consuming but i guess we will work on it and it's really interesting for us okay Okay, if there are no more questions, um, then we'll move on to Artem's next talk, Deep Learning Implementation of Anachronism Correction and Class Refinement. Um, so, yeah, I just, in that presentation, it's just like a um, couple of minutes, I would like to show the code of Time Match because how we did it. It's the simplest, um, mm, I don't know if it would be interesting for you, but uh, I just wanted to, uh, oh, I'm not sharing my screen, sorry. Um, I just wanted to show you the code, that's all. So uh, here I prepared some example in, in, in Google Club of time matrix implementation. Um, as you can see, uh, we used the mass RCNN uh, model with pre-trained -pre COCO, um, with pre-trained uh, model on COCO data set. Um, but, um, but we, we change it a bit, the, the code of the, of the model. So as you can see here, it's just a uh, simplest standard code of, uh, segmentation and we can see the results. Uh, 
Yeah, it always takes time. Um, we have like four person and hand back here. So definitely we understand that hand back is not good option for this painting. So that's why we, uh, in, in the model code, we implemented one more uh, function, which uh, calls time matrix application. This, uh, this function opened the CSV file um, with uh, names of uh, classes and the centuries. And based on this file, this, uh, this function uh, extract the probabilities of the each um, of the each uh, object. Compare the probability. Compare the time uh, contacts uh, with uh, the century of the painting, and based on this information, decide which of the probability is highest for this object. The results of uh, exactly of this uh, painting will be pretty interesting. and I will explain why. Uh, yeah, it takes time. So, um, as you can see that for the class person, we didn't apply the time matrix because it fits the time contacts. We apply uh, the time matrix just for the hand back. Um, after that, the function shows us the list of probabilities higher than zero. And we have just two options, backpack and tie. At the same time, the backpack and the tie uh, doesn't fit the time contacts. So that's why that's why the time matrix function um, labeled it as a background. So we don't have anything here. Um, I want to show you just one more example, which I like a lot. And I guess it would be interesting for um, yeah. As you can see, we have the man with a book, but the model uh, detected the fire hydrant and the tie. The tie, to be honest, is really problem for any kind of um, paintings if you use the the normal pre-training Coco model because everywhere uh, the model can detect the tie. After applying the tie matrix, yeah, it takes time. Um, for class tie, we have like one, two, three, four, five probabilities, five options, five options. Uh, the highest one is handbag, but it doesn't fit the, uh, the time contacts. So almost take into account that we put the 13th century of the painting and we can change, of course, because I don't remember exactly the, name, the, the, the date of creation of this painting. Um, the model didn't choose anything because it's uh, labeled as a background. But for the fire hydrant, the highest one was the person which is obvious. 
and the model choose the person as an object for this area. Um, that's all. Um, if you have any question, I can answer. If not, we can have a break and I mean, yeah, Rosa. Yeah. Um, okay, you have one question. Is the time matrix application code open sourced? Uh, not yet, but we will do it as soon as possible. And I guess we will send you the links for the code after the seminar. Okay. Uh, if there are no more questions, we will take a break um, and we will resume at 1040. Barcelona is getting a new supercomputer that will rival the world's current most powerful machine. But what will it do, how fast will it run, and what will it mean for Catalonia? A supercomputer is a computer with thousands of connected processors. Barcelona's new one is going to be between 15 and 20 times faster than the supercomputer it will replace here, and 10,000 times quicker than the Mare Nostrum 1, the original that was built here in 2004. Compared to a top-of-the-range consumer PC, this new machine will be millions of times more powerful. The Mare Nostrum 5 supercomputer will be built in the Torre Girona Chapel. The increase in computational power of the new computer is so vast that some of the processor racks will need to be stored in an adjacent building and will bring plenty of opportunities. It means jobs. It means the capacity of creating new jobs, high-level high jobs for technological people. The new ultra-powerful machine will be capable of peak speeds of 200 petaflops. That's 200 billion billion calculations per second. In other words, this computer will be capable of the same output as 6.3 billion people making a calculation every second for an entire year, all in one second. The scientists are using supercomputation, high-performance computing for almost every scientific field you can imagine, even for social sciences, for economics. The new machine will spark leaps in pharmaceutical research too, and supercomputers can even open the door to personalized medicine. Today, for instance, in Barcelona, we have many hospitals where some doctors are using these resources just to decide which type of treatments they have to use with a patient. So can supercomputers predict the future? For instance, with iWest Barcelona, we can run some artificial intelligence algorithms to be able to do what they call the uh, predictive maintenance. So trying to predict where are the highest probability to have some problem in the network, and if, if you can do something there before it happens. The European Commission are funding half of the 200 million euro that it will take to construct the Mare Nostrum 5. It will also cost one and a half million euro annually to power and cool the machine, and it will use up one megawatt of energy each year, enough to power 750 to 1,000 homes. Linked open data, what is it? And why is it good for you as a memory organization? Put yourself in your user's shoes. Say you want to find out about that painting of Venus standing on a shell. You'd probably search on the word Venus. You'll get lots of results. Venus, Venus, Venus. And after a while, you finally reach the right Venus on an individual website. But what if the web service could help you from the start? First, by disambiguating your search, and then by connecting all kinds of relevant information, updated dynamically within the same web space. Well, linked open data makes this possible. Here's how. Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the World Wide Web, asked us to put our information as documents on the web. And so we did. Lots of information today is available on lots of individual websites. And then he saw the next step forward. He asked us to put our information on the web as raw data, because raw data can be linked to other data. That generates connections for the user and puts them in touch with a much richer network of information. But to make that happen, you've got to do four things. First, it helps if your data is openly licensed. If it's not open, it's not easily interoperable. Second, you need to put your data on the web in a certain way so that the connecting links are present in their simplest form. 
and each of these links is represented using the Resource Description Framework, or RDF triple, because it's in three parts, and all these triples will interconnect. Third, when they are online, they need a unique address, a uniform resource identifier. Fourth, you need to put them online following the standard web resource protocol, HTTP. And hey presto, your linked open data can be connected to all other linked open data. Creating a rich network of information, making connections you never knew were there, linking knowledge in a way that's never been done before. So why is it good for you and for your users when other data connects to yours through inbound links? Your website rises higher in search engine results and your data is enriched by all those linkages and is more visible. But also you and others can easily build applications based on your data and the data of others so you're being found more easily and you're sharing information that's much more complete and the more useful your information is, the more visitors you get. The more traffic there is, the better your web statistics and performance indicators. Make your trustworthy metadata linked open data while the space is still available. You may become the canonical reference point. We think this is a win-win situation both for users and for memory organizations. The contract that Europeana has with its data providers, the Europeana Data Exchange Agreement, centers on open licensing as a way to facilitate this. This use of open data has been endorsed by the Europeana Foundation, the professional associations representing our memory organizations, so that all our public sector information contributes to the real power of the web. Okay, uh, it's 10.40, so let's resume the webinar. Uh, the next talk will be by Kim, and it is about the current state of the St. George on a Bike project. Uh, well, so now it's time to show the um, the current state of the art of St. George on a bike. Just the zoom uh, the view of the things we have done and the things that are done in the backstage of the, the time matrix uh, activities and tasks. So, the, well, the, the state of the art uh, contents will be the, the task and the work on object detection sources, then on classes, and then on object detection. <clears throat> well, for the object detection sources and, uh, and also for uh, generating captions, we have uh, we have used many sources, which is. Wikipedia, the, the Coco data set that you know that has been used for the caption classifier, and also uh, sources from uh, Europeana, the Web Gallery Art, and in order to gather images, to gather descriptions of the of the images, of, well, the, especially the paintings, and we did uh, 
all of this. And, um, and we found that in the descriptions of paintings, there are examples like the one you see in the Annunciation that bears the, the, the description of the painting is not a, a coco like caption. It, it, is, it is not a, a sentence that describes what is uh, depicted in the painting, but it also conveys information about the painter, about uh, the, the place the painting is set, and biographical details and all these things. So we have been working on a caption uh, classifier in, in order to uh, take, the, take the, des the description and uh, take all the, the sentences that are referring to the, uh, to the content in the painting, just leave out the, the the biographical details and other details, and it's just take the, the sentences that describe the painting. So we had to <clears throat> we had to um, implement this, and we have been working and refining and improving the the classifier. And then when we have the the captions uh, taken out from the descriptions from all these sources. Then the, with the COCO uh, free trade model, uh, this information is fed uh, into, into the, the object detection. Uh, as for classes, well, we have been working on, on defining the classes. As you know, <clears throat> we, have, we have performed transfer learning. Uh, so we have we have taken the Coco data set uh, list of classes, but as I told you before, we had to uh, uh, add other classes which is which are not in the list. So we had uh, discussions on which classes uh, we could add, and uh, as I told you before, the the basis of choosing in classes was uh, the Wikimedia Commons ca category for paintings, and especially the, the, the categories described as the visual relation. And according to this, we have, uh, uh, we have added uh, classes that, as I told you in the previous uh, session, uh, classes that refine the general class person. And uh, we have been prepared the, this, the, the list of the refinement, uh, was, so that the entity is that refined person, and uh, with uh, also justification of which, uh, why this and not others. So uh, we have uh, the use control account, uh, for instance, uh, well, we have the person, then the person is related to what things it can be related to. Well, it can be, uh, the person can be related to an object. This object identifies the person. So we have chosen objects that are good to identify a person. These are the, the, the cases of crown or uh, an oath, which are a meter. So objects that help to identify the person. Other relations are the a relation of the person with a supernatural. So that means uh, we have added um, entities like angel, dragon, and because they represent the supernatural counterpart of the Coco data set uh, classes. We have dogs and we have animals in Coco data set, but we introduce the supernatural counterpart with the dragons, uh, unicorns, and all kinds of things. So we have been uh, preparing these classes and, uh, and, and the discussion of why we have uh, chosen this and not others. Um, and as for, um, and as we have collected the data, we have um, performed 
mm, the filtering of the non caption like information from this data and then we have uh, we have a stated or list of classes uh, we have a uh, work on the object detection which has been uh, explained before so we select the classes we fill up uh, filtering of anachronic classes and then uh, providing the language model in order to guess to predict um, a new class according to uh, this language model which the language model can should not be uh, interpreted in grammatical terms but as a way of modeling or knowledge and especially um, cultural heritage knowledge for this reason we have uh, uh, tested or we have uh, we have been working on the feasibility of using the language model for images with a high uh, uh, high symbolic and iconographic uh, meaning and we have been comparing the results of uh, of the uh, entity detection with language models with the, the, the transfer language model, the, the suggestion I explained before, with captions uh, generated by the state of the art. And we have seen that um, that seems that uh, the, the captions or the, the detections, sorry, the events detected are more semantically consistent than the state of the art um, uh, systems. But uh then we have to to improve we 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 should uh, see uh or we are interested in evaluating this uh, entity uh, the detection of these entities and uh and uh, to have a for instance a, a crowdsourcing campaign in which the people uh, say what they see and if if this they descriptions uh fit the 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 common knowledge in the language model or we will discuss if we have to uh perform or to build up a, a language model for paintings and and so on so these are things uh for for the future and uh well so and of course now we have or less the the tools and the the, the important thing is uh, now to uh, apply them to evaluate to evaluate more fully and and uh, labeling the, the paintings and images in the in the um, catalogs and of, of images of paintings. So this is <laughs> more or less the how how we are and what we expect to do in the near future. Any questions? Comments? Okay, if not, then we will move on to the next talk by Artem about class features and deep learning implementation. Just give me a minute. Okay. Um, so, um, class features and deep learning implementation. Uh, Kim already mentioned that uh, we focused more or less in object detection, and we found some 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 issues using object detection for um, for cultural heritage, the the pre-training model of object detection. And we worked on classes, we worked on our own uh, model, et cetera, et cetera. And I will explain some, some kind of uh, stuff uh, in my presentation now. So this is just, just the pipeline which we uh, saw yesterday about how uh, we achieved the object detector. So we extracting the, uh, the matrix of weights uh, 
uh, using transfer learning from uh, pre from um, pre-trained model based on the Coco data set. We prepared our own data set more or less. We are in, in, in the process of preparing right now. Uh, and using the transfer learning, we, we train in our object detection. Object detector. Um, ah, okay. So right now I would like to focus on some 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 kind of uh, stuff about our own data set. So for us it would it was really difficult to find the proper data set, especially in case of cultural heritage and uh, uh, this possibility to use it in object detection. Uh, we tried to do it, uh, but you know the metadata is pretty poor for this type of the of the of the models, and we decided to do our own data set. So right now, here you can see. <coughs> sorry, right now you can see um, the sources of the images which we used for our own uh, data set. Uh, it was Europeana collection. It was uh, Cocoa dust. That Coco data set uh, in case of general classes like a person or horse, stuff like that. It was Wiki Art. Uh, it was Icon class uh, test set. It was Wikimedia Commons. Uh, it was Faris project. It was uh, Museum d'Orsay, Prada Museum, and British Museum. Um, I would like to mention three of them. Uh, the Europeana collection was the the biggest source of information for our data set, the biggest source of images. Uh, but obviously, uh, we didn't have any metadata about the objects on the, on the paintings, especially the position of objects for future training of object detection. The icon class data set, the, the icon class test set is really a nice source of, uh, of data um, in case of like, um, possible objects or tags or some kind of these examples. But the point that uh, this data set doesn't uh, have any information about the position of the objects. So that's why we had to do it manually as well. A part of it, we had some kind of like challenges uh, with icon class test set because some of the images, which is really interesting for us, uh, were in a low quality. And it's key point. It's issue for us because we, in the future, you, I will see the list. Uh, I will show you the list of classes, um, and you will see that some of the objects which we are trying to detect are pretty small, and the um, the resolution of the images is is really important for us. Um, Wikiart, uh, Coco data set, Wikimedia Commons, and Faras is really nice uh, sources, and we are using it. But I would like to focus on the Museum d'Orsay because uh, it, it is just one uh, and most important source of uh, data for us uh, in case of uh, paintings of expressionism and impressionism examples. And take into account the issues working with object detection on this, in, in these paintings. Uh, it's kind of like a case source for us in, in the future for extracting the information. Um, some more statistics about the data set. So for now, our data set um, contains 53 classes. The list of classes I will show you later and you can see which class which we are trying to detect. Um, the data set contain 4K images, but um, Right now we are working on crowdsourcing company and we are trying to achieve the 10K images to be able to train our model properly. So right now the model can detect uh, a lot of classes already, but the point that the, the data set unbalanced. So we have a lot of examples of persons, but, it, but we have just few examples of unicorns, devils, or uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, clothes or objects indicated to the profession of the, of the person. We decided to use the Pascal work format. And uh, yes, we trained in uh, our model using mar mar mass carcinian architecture. Um, 
why we decided uh, to use this architecture instead of like uh, fast RCNN or faster RCNN without segmentation, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, in the future, we would like to work with segmentation based on the on, on based on the paintings as well, and it would be interesting for us to to try to segment the the objects on the paintings and to see how it works. But take into account that uh, this task is uh, time consuming and uh, it's really difficult to create the proper data set for this task. Uh, right now we are focused just on the object detector. Uh, this is examples of how the model works right now. So you can see that uh, on the on the left side you can see the normal um, pre-trained uh, model based on the Coco data set, and on the right side we, you can see the the results of our own model. So our model, our own model already can um, um, can detect the angels and and other supernatural beings, and you you will see it in the future. Um, this is examples as well. Um, I like the example with these boats because um, you can see that we are working on really small objects such as banners, and that's why the the resolution of the images in our dataset is is kind of like really important for us. Um, take into account the cultural heritage and some kind of uh, issues. We, a part of the person, we would like to, to detect the part of the bodies, such as head or hands. Um, the example of this, uh, with a person is an example of a uh, painting of um, imp uh, Impressionism of 19th century. And even with this um, pretty blurred figure and shapes, our model can, uh, can detect the person. I mean, I understand that the, the bounding box is not correct but uh, we can do it uh, we talked a lot about the trying to detect the the profession of the person on the images so that's why we decided to use uh, crowns as a separate class and you can see that it's detected really well um, we tried to find some specific objects for several classes such as monk or knight or shepherd or prayer but we couldn't that's why we decided to to detect to to make it as a separate classes uh, and in some cases the model can work pretty well but in some cases it's uh, it's kind of misunderstanding because in the same area the model detects the person and the monk so sometimes it happens um that's all um according to our schedule uh the next presentation is mine as well where i have to um to show you some some kind of examples of class features and deep learning implementation i prepared the code it's not so super super interesting it's just a code, but I just uh, wanted to show you how the um, how, mo how the model works. Um, just give me a minute. So um, here you see the list of classes, which the list of fifty three classes, which we decided to include in our model, and right now the the model can detect these classes. A part of like typical ones such as person, uh, apple, orange. We decided to, or bird, we decided to, to include the specific classes and Kim already explained how we did it. Um, some classes uh, indicate into the kind of event such as crucifixion. Some classes indicated on the object exactly, such as angel, person or horse. Some classes indicated to the profession of the of the person, such as Tiara, Sujeto, Mitre. And we decided to split uh, some classes such as BERT. So we have the class BERT, the general class BERT, and we have the subclasses such as Dove, Eagle, or... Uh, 
Um, take into account the, the specific of cultural heritage, for example, uh, the set of paintings about landscapes, we decided to include the class tree to be able to, to detect that the, this is just a landscape. For example, if the model detects just trees on the, on the paintings without person, so we can assume that it's landscape. Um, yeah, we decided to, to add class newt for being able to detect the paintings of Greek or Roman mythology. Mm. And yeah, I mean, I will show you some, some example how the model works. I mean, right now we already trained the model and it exists. Uh, we are great, but we understand that uh, we have the problem of lack of data and we are working on it. And as I told you, we are um, launching the, the crowdsourcing company. After the finishing the model, of finishing the, uh, the data set, we will uh, publish it and it will be open source, of course. So yeah, you can see the, the example of detection person and sword here. I mean, the sword here, I guess. Um, I just want to show you one example, which is really interesting for me. Yeah, it's, it's not, not this one, but anyway. So you can see the, the person, the nodes, the trees. This is an uh, example of, uh, of parts of the body, as I told before. This example of detection of monks. So we have the person here, person here, and one here. Um, definitely it's pretty specific because we can assume that this is monk as well. But we have to, to take into account that what type of the monk we would like to detect. And it's again the problem of, uh, of data. For example, just, uh, just the monks in case of European cultural heritage or monks, for example, from Asian culture as well and we are working on it as well. And no, I guess it's the same. The last one. Yeah, this one. Um, this is really interesting. Um, I'm not sure that you can see it, but I will try to, to zoom in a bit. So we can see the set of persons here, which is like typical detection. And we can see the person and the prayer in the same bound bo uh, bounding box. So we have the separate class prayer and it's kind of kind of issue for us because the model in the same area right now can detect the prayer and monk oh no person and monk person and prayer person and knight person and i don't know shepherd for example but and we are, we are working on it but um it's really cool according to my opinion that the model right now can distinguish the prayer 
from another person already, even if we have the, the overlapping core overlapping of the objects. Um, that's all. So I can see that uh, that we have some some kind of uh, comments and questions regarding the data. Will it, will it be it be available as open source or some restricted copyrights for use in commercial contexts? Um, we are trying to do it open source. We are trying to do it open source, but the, the point that um, we extract the data from different sources and we have to take into account it. So maybe we will um, publish the, just the part of data set as open source, or maybe we will uh, publish the whole data set as open source, but we will try to, uh, we will try to publish it as soon and as soon as, as much as possible. Careful about the comment of the kangaroo data set. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we didn't have uh, many examples of nights, then we guessed why don't we use language model to predict them and we overcome the problem. Cool. Any more questions? Yeah, maybe maybe I can I can try to uh, to, to jump in just for the for the, the data sets because mm -hmm. uh, I, I would like to uh, to add to what uh, what Artem said uh, what we are gonna probably try to do is to publish as much as metadata uh, possible uh, including the rights uh, for the images and the, the point of the images uh, so that uh, possible users or anyone interested in, in it can uh, can actually assess what kind of subset from what we have they can use for their own purposes uh, according to uh, to their own context. I mean, if they are research institutions or if uh, if they are a more commercial endeavor, uh, then they could, they could filter uh, the, uh, the the content uh, depending on uh, on this context. Yeah. Thanks for the comments. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Rosem. Okay, so if there are no more questions or comments, uh, we will end the webinar early. We'll end here and um, we will be uploading the, the videos um, from day one and day two very soon and we will send you all a notification. Thank you very much.